My humble respect to Guru Mahan, Guru Piran Sivasankaran, Guru Piran Nyo, uh, and uh, good evening to all our Nyanis today. Uh, today I'm going to cover a continuation of uh, His Holiness G.P. Mahan's I God philosophy. Um, in the last session, we covered the concept of God. Um, I'm going to now co cover the concept of darkness. Uh, and it is a very important concept that lays the foundation for the concept of God and all the other principles that, uh, that is uh, covered in Swamiji's uh, I God philosophy. So this is what I want to cover today. <clears throat> I'm going to take you through the concept of darkness, which is the concept often is misunderstood. And, uh, you know, it's quite interesting in the, in the, uh, some scriptures, they call it kala. Kala is, uh, you know, time. And sometimes it's also called space. Time and space are used synonymously. And I'll tell you why that is the case. So I'll cover this notion of uh, darkness. Uh, I'll cover this principle of nothingness. Um, and also bring this notion of higher order continuum. Higher order means higher order to our own material universe. And then I want to spend some time on why we have difficulty comprehending this higher order. Because, you know, uh, we can comprehend our universe, our four dimensional universe. Why is it that we have challenges? And then the question is that how to cognize this higher order continuum. So, so let me start with this concept of darkness, which uh, Swamiji, um, you know, covers right after the concept of God. So here, concept of darkness, also space, he says, is that the principle of nothing. Uh, interestingly, space and time are used simultaneously. And today we know that space-time continuum is, is, is embedded together. If you look at all the, uh, you know, Einstein's uh, theory, he says that space-time continuum are, uh, you know, uh, integrated as, as one. And uh, Mahan and many great seers have seen this, have uh, you know seen this as one. And here Mahan brings in this notion of this principle of nothingness. And uh, most people misunderstand what this nothingness. They think is emptiness, not quite. So what this uh, is that, as I mentioned, the space-time are one. It's called the space-time continuum. And here, when they mean nothing, means that it is a substratum without time and without space. You know, it is this notion of no thing, absence thing is energy and matter, as I covered the last time. So the nothingness is actually a substratum that predates our universe, which is our universe is created with space and time. It's a substratum that is prior to space and time. So there's nothingness, as I said, define that as no thingness or the absence of energy, matter, time, universe. So there was a period that, you know, or I can't even say the period because period refers to time. There is a substratum that is uh, absence of this energy, matter, time. And that gave rise to our universe as we know it. So here Swamiji says very clearly, darkness has no form, it's formless nor can it be felt by senses. All our senses are material senses. So we're using matter energy, the senses with the frequency that can capture matter and energy. But this substratum cannot be picked up by matter. It's not, you know, our senses use frequency of energy and matter of this universe, the four-dimensional universe. It is not suited to capture or cognize this substratum, which is neither matter nor energy. So here, it cannot be inferred. So how do we then cognize this? And this is the secret later on, uh, Swamiji reveals. So this darkness is a substratum that is absence of our material uh, universe. So the question then one needs to ask is that, uh, so what was there before our universe? And clearly, Swamiji speaks about, you know, this, you know, uh, substratum or this continuum that exists, you know, prior to our, uh, you know, universe. And he says there's only one thing manifests itself. 
So it can create multiple universes, but it itself cannot be created. The reason why it cannot be created is time is not present, as how in our universe time is important to give um, you know, uh, birth and death. Time is also very important for space. You see why space time is together embedded? When we mean space, means we have displacement. Displacement can only take place if you have time. So here we see that neither of them exists. So this darkness is a substratum that cannot be created because time is not there. So here again, uh, Swamiji says that you know it it supports this darkness of this you know infinite continuum uh, supports a variety of things you know variety of you know our own universe energy matter and everything so it gives support to not just our universe but perhaps maybe other universes too. Uh, but what is really interesting is that here he talks about the substratum. It's not two, it's one infinite continuum, right? So uh, it's somewhat like when I ask you how many oceans are there, you may say, well, there's five oceans. If you think very carefully, actually all the oceans are connected, right? And they are one. Similarly, I ask you how many lands are there, you'll say, well, Australia is different from from you know the uh, Southeast Asian uh, you know continent and so on, we may see land separate, but when you go deep down, all the land are one, and also we see that land and water are one. So uh, we have this illusion of separation. In that same notion, uh, we may see ourselves separate. So here, Swamiji says that this substratum is one infinite continuum like how we see the oceans or the land. There is no two. So here, you know, uh, and he says that nothing creates this, which means time is not there. So which means that it must be omnipresent. It's always there, eternal. So this subtle, you know, uh, description is very important because that's the axiom that is going to imprint in all our discussions, including our own biology. So this substratum it supports our four dimensional universe. It's a one continuum, you know, one infinite continuum and within that infinite continuum is our four dimensional universe. There in itself, it tells you that the infiniteness is embedded and part and parcel of our universal uh, four-dimensional universe. While we see, uh, we experience the four-dimensional universe and all the forces and the physics of the four-dimensional universe, it is also embedded in the DNA of the four-dimensional universe, this omnipresent infinite continuum. Sometimes we don't feel it. And there's a reason for why that is the case. And, and, and we'll see the, how do we experience that infinite you know, the one infinite continuum of the substratum. So here again, Swamiji says that, you know, uh, this continuum is part and parcel, weaves through everything, you know, and he says nothing exists without it, you know, whether it's seed or life or, you know, nothing is devoid of it, it's omnipresent. So this notion of omnipresent is invoked here. And as you think very carefully, uh, it is actually, uh, part of that, um, that that substratum is omnipresent in all of us, is he? And uh, and that requires a fair bit of intensity, intensive introspection. So, so it seems like what he's uh, invoking here is this omnipresent state. That means it's timeless state, right? So what we have then is that before our universe actually began, what was it there? It was one infinite continuum, you know, of a higher order. That is, uh, you know, uh, and and that higher order uh, could be any dimensions, and uh, uh, let's call it infinite, because you know we are a finite being. Uh, we don't know what the continuum is. That we multitudes of uh, dimensions, and scientists today are speaking about seven dimensions, eleven dimensions, but I think we are still exploring, and. Uh, I'm of the view that it is something of a higher order, which is uncountable and, and that it is dimensionless, but yet it's got infinite possibilities to create any possible dimensions. So since 
now the question then is that although we have the four dimensional uh, you know, uh, universe imprinted in us, we experience it, that universal um, you know, substratum is embedded in our DNA. The question then is that why is the ordinary human mind cannot cognize it? You know, why is it that we feel the finiteness? You know, we feel the limitedness, we feel the mortality, we feel the perishability. All these are of this material universe that is embedded with you know, birth, sustenance for a while, and then uh, dissolution. All that physics, we feel that real. And we think that is what real it is. But, you know, um, scriptures and Mahans, and even for us, momentarily, we experience that eternalness. Yet we cannot comprehend it. Why is that the case? And the question is, the reason why is that the human mind is wedded and welded to this limited reality. You know, um, we are so caught up with this material world from the time we wake up to the time we go to bed, we are bombarded with this material universe. Even people, when they go to sleep too, they have, you know, music playing, you know, and sometimes people in sleep also, they start singing and doing all kinds of things. So the material universe is so embedded in the mind that the mind is unable to break away from the gravity of that materiality. So in order to realize this continuum, one needs to decouple from that four dimensional universe, at least for a short while. And, and this is why we see that in the early days of uh, you know, uh, um, the early periods, there was a lot of emphasis on introspection, contemplation, reflection, meditation, mindfulness. But today we live in a world where all that has been put aside and it's all about <clears throat> gratification of the senses and uh, we see the way children are you know brought up they put the children in front of tv and there's so many things that are happening the mind is attuned to that uh, you know uh, the stimulus continuously from young onwards from an infant onwards right up to the age very old age during the early periods, I remember we didn't have TV, but we had mothers singing songs, you know, uh, saying prayers and studying with us. All that now has been put aside to we see have continuous, you know, stimulus. And today it's even more so because we have a lot more digital technology that is continuously giving us and the mind is attuned to that quick response. And we are starting to see that the attention deficit among people is, 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 is getting shorter and shorter. So again, you know, while with all the modernity, I think the mind is finding it more challenging to decouple from this highly responsive uh, material universe. So again, I think greater, you know, uh, effort is needed to be able to decouple for a short while from that material uh, world. So this is the challenge. And we see that how do we transition from this material, you know, uh, reality to the dark sub, the darkness substratum or the infinite continuum? And this is where the push towards introspection, contemplation, reflection, and meditation, you know, and uh, thinking about things, thinking about concepts, reflecting back, contemplating, you know. Um, thinking deeply of why all this, what all this means and why all this means and what is the purpose of life and why am I here? This deep thought is really important and coupled with that intensive meditation. Uh, you see that many people today don't read books, you see? So, um, so again, you see that part of reading and reflecting is part of the meditational process. So again, uh, the way to decouple from the material world is essentially through this process of introspection, contemplation, reflection, and meditation. It is, this process is not an objective process. It's not something that you do externally. What you do externally, uh, sometimes is called rituals or acharas. It can only take you to a certain extent of understanding. Ultimately, it needs to lead to discipline and that introspection, contemplation, reflection. The only way one can acquire that experience of that self or the experience of that, that continuum that I'm talking about is through a subjective pursuit. 
It is not an object. Object is four dimensional and limited. Subject, that is the core that is weaving through all of us and supporting the material universe. That subject is the infinite continuum that we're talking about. It has to be a subjective pursuit. So what we see here is that to realize this, one needs to understand what the reality is and how to understand this reality, this expansion and manifestation, and how to unify back to our true state of existence. And this nothing, as I spoke about, is this infinite continuum that Swamiji talks about darkness. And it supports our four-dimensional universe. And think of this four-dimensional universe as you know, with all the laws of physics, gravity and electromagnetism and so on, the weak forces. And within that, we are one of those species that is a four dimensional universe. It supports all other species and everything else, including us. And, and, and we are, if you look very carefully, we see that the infinite continuum supports that four dimensional universe and the four dimensional universe supports us as a species, but at the core of that, you know, we ask this question, why we miss this darkness? Because our focus is only on the four-dimensional universe, the white space. We're so caught up with the white space, a lot of our attention is on, you know, uh, what we do from the time we wake up right up to going to sleep and the entertainment, the desires and all those things. So our focus primarily out of the 24 hours, maybe six to seven hours we sleep, the remaining is fully focused on that white space, which is the four dimensional universe. So what we do is we miss. So I ask all of you, how much time do you give for your introspection? Take six hours out of your, 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 your 24 hours. So you got 18 hours out of 18 hours, how much time do you allocate to introspect, contemplate, reflect, and meditate? Some people say, oh, well, Guru, I give a half an hour or maybe an hour. That is one hour out of 18 hours. So the trick is that how do you expand that one hour to that 18 hours of being connected? Right? And this is where why uh, many people miss that infinite continuum because our focus is very much on that four-dimensional universe for most of the time that we have. So Swami says very clearly here that why people miss it is that the intellect will try to understand everything just in front of it. Everything that you observe, it only tries to interpret and experience what it observes through its material senses. But the same intellect will shudder to understand itself because it's so attuned to this material universe and it's so used to it you know, to make that effort to know oneself, it is very difficult. You know, it's like a rocket trying to beat gravity. It needs so much thrusters. Uh, it requires a lot of thrusters if you're so caught up in this material world and most people don't want to put in that effort, right? So again, uh, why they're caught up in this four-dimensional universe, unable to understand the broader reality or the infinite continuum. So, Again, so Swamiji he speaks about, you know, the Unarva Gavanipa, you know, the introspection, contemplation, reflection, and meditation. He says, now, instead of focusing on that material, focus within you. You know, he says, now, I observed outside, I observed inside. As I started observing inside, I understood things better, you see, and everything else, uh, you know, had greater meaning. So this introspection, contemplation, reflection, and meditation started transitioning the human mind from that white space, that four-dimensional, to that inner reality, which looks exactly the same as the outer reality. So the inner reality, which is this dark space is part and parcel of the greater universe. And that's what meditation gives. And that is done through this connection of that meditational sadhana, that one starts connecting. One can say that the, the Unarva Gavani, which is focusing on the vibration, the inner vibration, this is your Kundalini, 
you know, that life force, as the mind anchors on that, what you see is that you transition from that white space to the inner reality that makes who you are as a being, that infinite continuum that is imprinted in you. And when you get to that reality, you see that this entire thing now is covered by the whole space there. So we see this <clears throat> continuum. So the connection through this meditational sadhana enables you to go to that highway to infinity, which is beautifully. And this is the part of that Kundalini Yoga or the yogas that Mahan and the great saints teach is to be in union with that inner self. So when that happens, we see that beautifully Mahan says, he who understands himself by his intellect becomes God himself. What's the God he's talking about? He's talking about this transcendental God, that space that is the substratum, the infinite continuum that you are part of that reality. So, so the key takeaway from this is that, as I mentioned in the earlier lecture, Swamiji spoke about, spoke about the transcendental God and the time-based God. So what we have is that as long as we are in this circle with the four-dimensional, we are God in different forms in this material reality. But to attain the transcendentality, one needs to be in union with this process of yoga, yuk is critical. And introspection, contemplation, reflection is very important. Not just half an hour and an hour, but carrying that you know, connected state in every facet of our lives. So the key takeaway from this uh, satsang is that the zero darkness is a higher order state and is the core to our DNA. It is that infinite continuum that supports our universe. Our universe emerged from that Irul state. You know, it is supported. It's powered by this Irul state. We emerge from that universe. Our material biology emerged from that, that universe. Hence, you know, we are connected to that Irul or that infinite continuum. But what we have is that the ordinary human mind is so focused on the material reality that it misses that infinite continuum. And this is the part that, you know, I think uh, most people grapple with. So mindfulness or yoga or meditation or Kundalini meditation helps one to connect back to that infinite continuum. So every day, one who allocates time for mindfulness and, and, and meditation slowly, slowly, they will start getting glimpses of this infinite continuum, the substratum that Swamiji is talking about, the zero state that he's talking about. And slowly, slowly, it percolates in the half an hour, and an hour, eventually, it becomes part of that connected state. So that Yiru state, eventually, you come to the state where Yiru, or the infinite continuum, is within us. That is this black space within all of us and it is around us. To be able to cognize that, you know, that is why yetada tatparate yeti yeti utturamai utru utru dongkarang iparamum within me, aparamum outside me, yega parabaram, the entire universe, the entire cosmos is part and parcel of me. What it means is that this infinite continuum is within us and we are within that infinite continuum. And this is what Swamiji uh, teachings tells us. So what we see here is that this chart is so important, right? It shows us as that reality that is part and parcel of this material universe and the entire material universe, including us, are part of that grander universe that is out there, which is the infinite continuum. So, and this is what Swamiji finishes off. He says, I emerge as the sole God of the universe, seemingly, seemingly attached to the material world. So I'm part of that reality, but remaining always in a state of detachment from that worldly life. So if you see this reality, I'm, con I'm connected to that transcendental state of existence, which is that Iru state. Thank you very much, Sandosha.